Aloha. Hi, everyone. I'm Callie O'Neill. I wanted to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, Happy Holiday Season in spite of it all and how 2020 was, and how crazy it was. And I wanted to share with you, thank you for asking so many of you over time, my Kona Airport mural as a slideshow. And very briefly, this is a work I did at the University of Hawaii uh, to celebrate their 75th anniversary. I was ecstatic to do this. And it's called Hawaii Ka'ukumu. Hawaii is my teacher. A mural on the spirit of growth and learning then and now. And it's a mural on concrete um, with Polytech, the paint of the mural, Mexican mural masters. This is Puakala at Puakea Bay, and it's 26 feet long and about five feet high. And this is the beautiful native Hawaiian white poppy. Here's its story. It led to this mural called Kipapa and the Path of Light. I had a big dream to reach the hearts and minds of many people by creating permanent public murals with depth and meaning. On two occasions, I was advised if I wanted this dream to come true, I must find and become really proficient in a permanent, no maintenance exterior medium. In other words, something I could sign my name to that would last 50 years and longer. Even though I was asked to create a painted work of art for that former mural, I convinced the patron to let me create my first stained glass mural, Puakala at Puakea Bay, with the express goal, which is rare for me, of winning a coveted Hawaii State Foundation on Culture and the Arts Commission, and it worked. I won the competition to create this mural at Kipapa Elementary School, and I'm happy to say that the mural uplifted the energy and spirit of the school. The woman on the lower right gives you the scale of this mural. And to fulfill the Department of Education component of the project, I taught over 200 fourth grade students, their parents, their aunties, their uncles, their grandparents, community volunteers, to create this multi mosaic border that's very small pieces of very heavy, thick stained glass. That's a lay aloha around this mural, which is about the future the present and rooted in the past in the taro in the land where the children are standing on the hard work of their elders. Fabulously, that led to the Pukalani Mural Commission. This is 52 feet long. This is on Maui and it's another school mural. And on the left, I wanted to show you that this is how the process goes with the sketch and then drawing and multiple drawings and tons of research. And then there's the watercolor on the left and the finished mural on the right. This is the Pukalani Elementary School mural dedication it was completed in 2006 when we also had the craziness of the honor of the Rama exhibition at the World Conservation Congress in Honolulu. The mural is a plea to restore the native forest waters and soils of Maui. It measures 52 feet wide by 14 at the apex with a small mosaic border, a lei aloha of native trees that's also symbolic of the hydrological cycle. This was handcrafted by 313 students, their teachers, parents, and lots of community members. And this beautiful array of colors was um, to reflect the colors in the mural. So each class chose a color in the mural. And we walked in and prepared for this gathering, a big gathering celebration, only to find the children walking in and these colors was really almost completely overwhelming. Those two, those three murals really led to the current commission that I have at the Ellison Onizuka Kona International Airport at Keahole in Kona. Here it is, all 300 feet of it, or 321 feet if you count the columns. 12 by 300 feet, eight panels, 12 by 40 feet each. This is where it all began. Uh, and the mural is in the glare beyond this new TSA building, which has just recently opened. This is again, Christmas 2020 when I speak. In an international art competition with over 300 applicants, through the Hawaii State Foundation on Culture and the Arts and Department of Transportation Airports Division. I was 
honored and thrilled to be unanimously selected for this commission. There I am in front of one of the kind of rough hewn walls. Um, it's an intense process. Precise wall dimensions and details, including electrical outlets, faucets, security cameras, louvers, overflow drains, are here reviewed constantly with Mark Botticelli, um, the project uh, engineer, and his inspector, one of his inspectors, Armando Mendoza. Every detail on the walls is essential for the mural design work, especially as there's no straight lines I and mean, the verticals are straight, but the, the ground descends. So the walls vary slightly in width and increase in height from left to right. There it is, the wall viewed from the north to the south before the final mural preparation. It's an artist's dream, it's a muralist's dream, really. We wanna thank Nan Inc. We wanna thank so many people, thanking the State Foundation on Culture and the Arts, thank my committee, thank Aaron Ackerman, my project manager, Julia Fairchild, my assistant, our team, so many people and thank you for Nan for this stellar wall construction and, and finishing, it's absolutely gorgeous. Some early design ideas that I really liked, made it past the drawing board, but not past the Kupuna or the design committee. My aim at first in using uh, sacred arches for cognitive dissonance, in other words, that kind of jarring, like what? You know, missed its mark completely. Early renditions of the mural based on these cathedral-like elements were nixed by my art advisory committee as not in keeping with the Hawaiian culture. I had an extraordinary, and still do, have an extraordinary art advisory committee. The sacred arches then transformed into native tree branches that frame each panel and give rhythmic structure to the mural while honoring the forest. It's all about the forest. From this conceptual design really early on, the creative development of the mural took many turns to satisfy everyone involved in guiding this mural process. It's been now two and a half years of full-time work and we're going on to the wall this week to start painting the mineral background. I made five rounds of presentations, design rounds to my committee and the finely detailed black and white and full color designs plus 20 supporting documents, probably hundreds of pages are required approval at every level in order to proceed to mobilization construction where we've been for the last about eight months, nine months. I work closely with every kupuna in the mural to articulate the Hawaiian message that's at the heart of the Hawaiian culture of aloha aina and malama aina, love of the land and care of the land. And there's a huge meaning to the word land. This process took almost three years of work, including interviews with the kupuna and other cultural and scientific advisors, research, portrait photography, and research into the permanent materials and equipment necessary to craft the mural. Did I mention research? Here's the first one. I'm gonna just briefly run through these walls. You can check out the PowerPoint by itself. Um, this is Eola Ke Aloha, O Vau Ke Aloha. Long live Aloha, I am Aloha. One could say a whole lot about the counter, the depth of symbolic meaning about each one of these murals. But all I wanna say about this is it opens the mural. It's the first mural on the south or the left side. And it shows you to please pay attention to this curving line that circles the mandala, the ulu, the breadfruit mandala that falls from the sky as the waters of life. It's called the thin blue line. As astronauts see life from space, the whole entirety of life is the thin blue line. Again, representing the thin film of life in which we live. And this will stretch across the entire 321 foot mural. It symbolizes the ha, our breath, the atmosphere, climate, and the living waters that sustain life. Within this living membrane, we are supported by tremendous biodiversity, the variety of life on earth. Donated recycled blue bottles will be fused to form this blue line that the kupuna said has to even cross the columns. And it will have inscriptions from the community engraved on the blue glass plaques. You're welcome to be a part of that. 
The Thin Blue Line invites everyone to participate and honor their family or their ideals in this epic project. Community participation is always the key to authentic community and public art. This is Keala who's opening the mural. You'll see him in a minute, 10 feet tall. Aloha is constant throughout all time and encompasses all. It is the source and oneness of life. It is the ha, the one breath we all share. Aloha is the spirit of life, the living biosphere, our atmosphere. Aloha is love, light, and awareness. We love Kayla. Here's Earl Regador, who I've worked with for many years. I've been the artist in residence at Four Seasons, Huala Lai, where Earl heads the um, Hawaiian Cultural Center. Alo means to join with, to be in the presence of the ha, aloha, to be in the presence of the breath of another, the spirit and the essence of life. Second wall is on the waters, the sacred waters of life. Punahana Springer. Now we all must become water conservers and water protectors. Her son, Keikali Tomic, we are so honored to work with these kupuna, to be guided by them, that they're willing to come forward and share their wisdom and knowledge, which is absolutely essential for us to have a thriving, healthy future. For water is life. The ocean, two thirds of the world. This is in fond memory of Ling Nakachi, who inspired two more generations so far of ocean defenders. And it's from all of the, us who had the honor to know Ling and love him. Malama i ke kai, a malama ke kai ya oi. Take care of the ocean and it will take care of you. And this is the Moana Ohana, these amazing ocean defenders. Academics, these two young people who are kupuna, not all kupuna are old, and like Nakashi, their dad. Our destiny and the ocean's destiny are one. By her deepness, Sylvia Earle. Sharks are the guardians of the reef and the ocean. And these are shark defenders. These are family to many of the Hawaiian people. So the mural travels and now it's into the land. Eola ka'aina, o vau ka'aina. Long live the land, I am the land. We eat of this land, we drink the waters, we breathe the air. Aloha aina is love of the land, the heart of the Hawaiian culture and really all indigenous cultures. It's the very heart of it. And so Clayton Punehale, the late Clayton, just in his hands, like, love the land, love your place, deeply engage with your own sense of place. And beyond that, aloha ke kahi, ke kahi, love one another, says Junior Kanuha, the late Junior. This is the Voyagers, right when you come out of TSA and you walk along the wall, the Voyagers, have done an extraordinary epic journey, possibly the most epic journey ever done in traveling around the world in their Malama Honu, a take care of the earth voyage around the world with celestial navigation. What do they really care about? It's all about the forest. And Shorty Bertelman asks, paddle together as one, take good care of the limited resources on our canoe, our islands, our earth only one. To them, to all, it's all about the forest. It's all about the relatives. Take the long view. The kupuna are telling me to relax, Kale. No worries. You know, we have to think in tree time. You know, think in bigger cycles that the earth can heal if we just step up as we now are stepping up in this time of rest for nature. And there's the culture that comes from the word cultivate. This beautiful Keakealani Ohana, so magnificent, holding the stories, Ku'ule all the way to the right, the mom, 
this master storyteller of Hawaiian, of the Hawaiian culture, there to teach us that we may for a moment be able to see from native eyes, a deep pers perspective that everything we see is relation. And so the mural begins with aloha, it ends with the mural, but it really doesn't end, it connects in a cycle. Everything is in a circle so that we are this aloha, not may the spirit, it's a prayer really, may the spirit of aloha touch all people on behalf of the children and the perpetuation of life. So now we're actually doing it. We're headed to the wall tomorrow actually. And we're gonna begin our projection testing and our painting. Um, thank you to Epson. We have so many people to thank for our new projector. And here we are at the Parker Ranch Center. Mahalo to them. I'm projecting, <laughs> contemplating deeply how big Keala looks suddenly up on the wall. And he's actually traced on the wall. It looks a little more reasonable size there. He's at 10 feet tall, standing more than 10 feet tall. Kona's Kumu Hula, Keala Ching, represents and expresses the ancient, timeless spirit of Aloha. Kala opens the heart of the mural with a chant and a prayer for the waters of life. Because of full-scale mylar cutting patterns, so now we're going into a little of the technical um, part of the mural. I just wanna share with you a little behind the scenes. So once the uh, State Foundation approved the final design, I focused on the freehand drawings. Everything I do is freehand. And then each piece, if you look closely, has to be numbered. Are you, and I use the Renaissance technique of graphing to do the drawings. Again, this is Junior Kanuha. He's the tallest figure, he's 11 feet tall. So because this um, mylar cutting pattern is expensive, I wind up having these like really perfect drawings and then we get them blown up to 10 feet tall and then we have to cut them all up again so that they fit on a three foot scan without wasting a lot of materials, going for the lowest footprint we can. So thanks to Kona um, Express Repro Graphics. And here we are, we're working on uh, Keala in the studio. It says that my yoga has come in handy because half the times I have to sit on the table to do some refinements in the drawing. Uh, my stained glass partner, Lamar, is picking up the weedy. To the right, you see this concrete board that we'll be building the giant puzzle with. There's Noah, my son Noah, and Lee. This lady, my Hanai son Jeremiah on the right. So it's it's really an exacting process. We, this glass, while it will become permanent and sturdy when it's set in concrete, has to be held vertically. It traveled vertically across the water. Great waters from Seattle. So I won't read all of this, but it's carefully chosen glass. So we're doing fashion design in glass, all of it made in the United States. Huge mahalo over many murals now to Northwest Art Glass in Seattle for all of your help. And here we are. So we've got a beautiful library. I think it's the biggest library of stained glass, certainly on the big island in our studio, which used to be a carport with an earthen floor. Now it's the glass library. Thank you, Beverly over here. She's making sure that each piece has an eighth of an inch surrounding it so that when we grab it, it holds together really well. Meet Lamar Yoakum, my, um, behind the scenes stained glass partner for 30 years now. This photo was taken during the construction of the Pukalani mural before the studio upgrade. So it's even way better now, essential to doing such a big project, 300 feet long. He's cutting these pieces. So he cuts them all out in mylar. We keep them organized by tagging them, attaching them back on the actual mural base pattern. And then they get traced onto the glass. And Julia and I, my assistant, I place each one of them on the glass by hand to get the lines to flow. Here's Keala. So he's our first figure that we're working on. And not that he's nearly done, but a lot is done with him. Um, no sooner was this mural complete in its cutting than we've refined his hair. We had to redo lines. Can't tell until it's all together. What colors that we had to do. 
had to do over, maybe and over again. So um, his bird is Eva Capolena. So each mural panel will have a bird. Birds were the top predators, the top species in Hawaii throughout all time. Um, this is a real aside, but really relevant. You can look on the PowerPoint yourself to read the story. But in essence, I was um, asked during the whole process to redo the portrait of Jesus that had tragically broke, broken at Mokowai Kawa Church in Kona. And I learned a great deal from this for the kupuna of backside, frontside painting and got all new brushes, handmade brushes in Germany that are remarkable. So the Lord Jesus himself showed up to teach me the one thing that I was concerned about, which was painting monumental scale faces. I mean, the faces are this big that we paint, that I paint in fire. So you can only do a little bit. It's vitreous paint. Paint in fire, 1,250 degrees, back and forth 10 times. So this is Julia's writing that I accomplished the magic of drawing and painting of the kupuna inside a tiny little studio. And there's Julia, who knows as much about the project as I do. Um, and we do multiple tasks together. She's on the computer. She's writing. She's researching. She's doing work. We're communicating all the time with the people outside and around us. We love you, Pomai, Bertelman. So this is how the graphing goes on drawing. And now I'm glaze painting. Glaze painting on glass is a labor-intensive ancient art, which starts by measuring the powdered glass. I prepared the paint samples, shown here before, at the top, and after firing. And I'll use um, these paint colors to define the kupuna. Keala. This is where we are right now. First thing that happens is the lines. Then I'll go into the shading, which I'm actually doing now. The background is this magnificent paint that can last 100 years. It's Beak 100% mineral paint. And this is our palette right here on the right. This is literally $20,000 worth of paint going on the wall. It's magnificent earthen mineral pigmented paints, very ancient looking like fresco. And who knew that the project engineer would turn out to be my sweetheart, Mark Bonicelli is the bonus of the mural. He's helped me with everything in this mural so far and for a long time to come. I'm super grateful, grateful to all of you for your support. This is done for you. Um, so please be in touch. I'd love your feedback. Love to see you in Hawaii at the wall. Come visit us. You'll see the painting team in white on the mural. Aloha. Too long.